Game of Thrones is one of the bloodiest shows on television, and it takes some serious creative liberties with the source material, especially since it's now surpassed the timeline in George R. R. Martin's books. With a body count that continues to climb with every episode, there have been quite a few characters to bite the dust on the show, even if they're still alive and well in Martin's world. Here are some of those dead Game of Thrones characters you may still read about in The Winds of Winter. Catelyn Stark on the show, Catelyn Stark's sad tale ended when her throat was slipped by the phrase at the Red Wedding. In the books, though, she's still kicking around, although we're not sure you could call her alive. Instead of letting Catelyn rest in peace after she was brutally murdered, George R. R. Martin had the phrase throw her body into the green fork of the trident. She drifted downstream until being discovered by the direwolf Nymeria, who was being unconsciously walked into by Arya Stark. Nymeria pulled Catelyn from the river, and she was later found by Beric Dondarrion and the Brotherhood Without Banners. After Thoros of Mia refused to revive her because she was three days dead, Beric gave Catelyn the kiss of life himself, bringing her back at the cost of his own life. Undead Catelyn became Lady Stoneheart, the new leader of the Brotherhood who set forth on a bloody campaign of vengeance against anyone even remotely associated with the phrase, the Boltons or the Lannisters. Although Game of Thrones hasn't been shy about reviving people from the dead, even ones that were already starting to rot like the mountain, Lady Stoneheart has never gotten to come out to play and slay on the show. Ramsay Bolton Game of Thrones fans may have breathed a sigh of relief when the King of Cruel finally bit the dust in Season 6. Ramsay Bolton's death finally gave Sansa Stark some satisfactory revenge and served up some payback for all the times he'd sicked his dogs on other people. In the books, though, Ramsay is still alive and wreaking havoc on Westeros, right alongside his dad Roots. Ramsay last appeared in A Dance with Dragons after wedding Sansa's friend Jane Paul, a steward's daughter that Littlefinger trained to impersonate Arya. Several weeks after the nuptials, a still alive Mance Raider disguised himself as a bard to help Theon and Jane flee Winterfell before they ran into Stannis Baratheon's army. Later, Jon Snow, who didn't know Ramsay's bride wasn't the real Arya, received a letter from Ramsay, demanding the return of his wife and Reek. Ramsay claimed to have defeated Stannis' army and slain Stannis himself. Since we know how much Ramsay loves to lie, I grew up on Saltcliffe, my lord. I was only a boy when they took you away. It would be smart to take the bastard of Bolton's words with a grain of salt until we learn the truth in Book 6, which means we should probably consider Stannis as still among the books living for now as well. Shireen Baratheon There's no doubt that Stannis Baratheon is a cold man in the books and on the show, as his thirst for power comes at the expense of his affection for his wife and daughter. But the show version of Stannis was so much worse than it had to be. In Season 5, the Red Witch Melisandre convinced Stannis and his wife Selyse to allow her to sacrifice Shireen to the Lord of Light, so he might bless Stannis' army and lead them to victory against the Boltons. Instead, half of Stannis' army deserted him. Selyse hung herself, and Ramsay Bolton easily wiped out the remaining soldiers in battle, all while poor Shireen became a pile of dust on her pyre. For readers, the sacrifice scene was probably a shock since Stannis didn't take Shireen with him to confront Ramsay in Martin's version. In fact, Shireen, Selyse, and Melisandre were all left behind at Castle Black when his army marched with instructions that the princess should be left in charge if he fell. As far as we know, Shireen's still kicking it in her castle, even if her grayscale scars frighten the wildlings. According to the Game of Thrones showrunners, though, Shireen's fiery death was one of the three secrets that Martin revealed to them about the future of his books. So, even if living through Shireen's demise once was enough, it might happen again on paper soon enough. Alyssa Thorne At the end of Season 5, Alyssa Thorne managed to organize a successful mutiny against Jon Snow and murdered him to claim the title of Lord Commander. His reign was short, however, after Melisandre resurrected Jon and the Wildlings captured the mutineers. Jon executed Alyssa for his betrayal. In the books, Alyssa still intensely dislikes Jon, but he's wisely avoiding giving Jon any excuse to execute him. I never once disobeyed an order. Loyalty is the foundation on which the Night's Watch is built. In fact, Thorn was still away from the wall when the mutineers killed Jon, so he had no part in their treachery. If Jon does get resurrected in the books, then he'll no doubt execute the mutineers, but Alyssa Thorn won't be on the gallows with them. If I had to do it all over, knowing where I'd end up, I pray I'd make the right choice again. Tommen Baratheon At the end of Season 6, 
King Tommen gave new meaning to the name of his homestead, King's Landing. After his wife Marjorie and the entire crowd at the Sept of Baylor were blown up by his mother Cersei, he leapt from his window at the Red Keep and fell to his death. While there was a tragic end for the young king on the show, he's still alive and seated firmly on the Iron Throne in the books. For now, at least. The book version of Tommen is several years younger than he is on the television series, and his primary hobbies are signing anything the small council puts before him and are playing with the kittens Marjorie gave him. Speaking of his lady wife, she's also still alive in the story. And while the two are married in the books, they most definitely have not consummated their marriage bed. As of A Dance with Dragons, Tommen's future rule was looking bright with his uncle Kevin as Hand and Regent, but Varys nipped that in the bud when he murdered Kevin and Pycelle. Considering that the prophecy about Cersei's children dying in shrouds of gold still looms large for all the Lannisters, Tommen's death is probably imminent on paper as well. Marcella Baratheon Unlike most of the Lannisters, Marcella was actually a sweet and courteous princess who was flourishing in Dawn and was quite obviously in love with Prince Tristan Martell. In Season 6, though, Marcella became one of the victims of Ilaria Sand and her daughters. In her thirst for revenge over Oberon Martell's death, Ilaria gave Marcella a poisoned kiss that later took her life in her uncle-slash-father Jamie's arms. In the books, however, Marcella is alive in Dawn, albeit gravely injured. Cersei sends one of the Kingsguard to bring her back to King's Landing, but Prince Doran's daughter, Arianne, abducted her in an attempt to have her crowned in opposition of Tommen. In a confrontation with Doran's guardsmen, one of Arianne's accomplices tries to murder Marcella to force a war with the Lannisters, but instead of killing her, his sword maimed her by cutting off her ear and leaving a nasty scar on her face. As of A Dance with Dragons, Marcella was traveling back to King's Landing, accompanied by Namira Sand, who will be taking a seat on the small council. Rickon Stark On the show, Rickon Stark joined his oldest brother Rob in death when he was killed by Ramsay Bolton to kick off the Battle of the Bastards. He'd taken refuge with the Umbers, but that house betrayed him by pledging fealty and turning him over to the Boltons. Poor Rickon. In the books, some of Rickon's story remains the same. Osha took him and Shaggy Dog, and they split from Bran's group in order to keep the Stark siblings safe. Last we heard of him in A Dance with Dragons, he'd fled across the Bay of Seals, where Sir Davos Seaworth was set to go retrieve him. Hodor Hold the door! Even though Hodor was giving a devastating backstory and final moment in Season 6, the gentle giant is still alive and well in the books. In A Dance with Dragons, Bran, Mira, Jojen, Hodor, and Summer reached the cave of the Three-Eyed Raven. Although they were attacked by whites just as they arrived, everyone survived the encounter, and Bran hasn't encountered the Night King in any of his green dreams yet. That doesn't mean Hodor will make it through A Song of Ice and Fire and Scave, though. According to George R. R. Martin, while the meaning of his name will be the same in the books, the way its origin is revealed will be different. Knowing Martin, that probably means it will just be as heartbreaking, though. Lancel Lannister Cousin Lancel's future on the show went up in smoke when he was killed in the season 6 finale. After being dispatched by the High Sparrow to find Cersei, Lancel spotted one of Kyburn's child spies and followed him into the labyrinth of passages below the Sept of Baelor. There, the child shanked him and left him to watch as a puddle of wildfire ignited to burn him and the whole Sept of Baelor. In the books, Lancel was gravely injured in the Battle of the Blackwater, leaving him a frail and pious man after his recovery. He joined the Faith Militant as a member of the Warrior's Sons, an order of knights sworn to serve the High Septon. And when he last appeared in the books, it was to serve as an escort for Cersei during a Walk of Atonement and a Dance with Dragons. So whether he'll still be punished by way of wildfire remains to be seen, which also leaves the fates of the High Sparrow, Marjorie, and Sir Loras in question for now as well. Walder Frey while fans of the show had to wait several years for it, Lord Walder Frey finally got his comeuppance for the events of the Red Wedding when he was killed by Arya Stark in the Season 6 finale. She murdered his sons, Lothar and Black Walder, before baking them into a pie and serving it to their father while disguised as a serving wench. After she revealed herself and killed him, Arya took his face and posed as Lord Walder in order to organize a feast for the remaining Frey kinsmen, where she murdered them all with pitchers of poisoned wine. Like the fine vintage that ended the phrase, the scenes were delicious. Winter came for House Frey. As satisfying as all that was, though, Lord Walder is still hale and hearty in the books. As of A Dance with Dragons, the prickly and treacherous octogenarian was recently wed to another young new wife. Somehow, we have to believe Winter is coming for him in the books, too. Olena Tyrell 
The Queen of Thorns, Olena Tyrell, received a relatively gentle death by Game of Thrones standards in Season 7, when she took the painless poison offered to her by Jaime Lannister after his army sacked Highgarden. Displaying a trademark sharp tongue, the Tyrell matriarch opted to take the poison before revealing to Jaime that she was the one responsible for the murder of his son, Joffrey. Tell Cersei, I wanted to know it was me. Like her on-screen counterpart, the book version of Elena has taken leave of King's Landing, returning to Highgarden the day after Marjorie's wedding to Tommen. She hasn't been seen in the book since the Feast for Crows, so it's unknown if Elena later returned to the capital after her granddaughter was arrested by the High Sparrow. For her sake, we hope not. Benjen Stark Uncle Benjen didn't have a whole lot to do on Game of Thrones, despite lasting for seven seasons. He was mostly just portrayed as that benevolent uncle who rode in to rescue his nephews from certain doom beyond the wall. And after he was toppled by the Night King's army in Season 7, he's probably not coming back for another rescue mission anytime soon. In the books, we never actually get a real confirmation that Benjen was the mysterious undead Cold Hands, but all the clues point to that being the case. He popped up to save Sam and Gilly from the Whites as they fled south from Craster's Keep, and he also killed the Night Watch's mutineers that attacked Lord Commander Mormont. So while he still can't get past the wall because of magical spells, he's probably still lurking out there in the woods for the next time the Three-Eyed Raven needs his help. Littlefinger in the season 7 finale of Game of Thrones, Littlefinger's scheming finally caught up to him when Sansa decided she'd had enough of his meddling. With the help of an info bomb from Bran and the slicing skills of Arya, Sansa managed to catch Littlefinger in his own web of lies and had him executed for treason and murder. In the books, however, Littlefinger is still trying to pull a fast one on people for personal reasons over in the Eyrie. Following his murder of Liza Erin, Littlefinger's latest plot is to marry Sansa off with Robin's cousin so that she can ascend the throne when Robin eventually succumbs to his chronic illnesses. A sample chapter from The Winds of Winter indicates that Sansa will have mixed feelings about this arrangement, simultaneously working to protect Robin while seducing his cousin. And since the Woods Witch prophesied that Sansa would slay a savage giant, which sounds like the sigil of House Baelish, he might not make it much longer there either. Should I send word that I'll be delayed? Viserion one of the most shocking moments of Season 7 came when Jon Snow's brigade of zombie captors had to be rescued from a sea of white walkers by Daenerys and her dragons. In the midst of the rescue, the Night King took aim at Viserion and managed to slay the dragon before resurrecting him as a new undead mount that he could take through the wall. In the books, Viserion and his siblings are safe, for now. One of the Martells tried to capture one of the dragons, but failed miserably. And when we last saw Viserion in A Dance with Dragons, he was happily roasting and eating the plague-filled corpses that the Yunkish army were flinging into Marine. Yum. The rest of the undead. As if those names weren't enough to prove the Game of Thrones showrunners have an even heavier hand than George R. R. Martin, some of the other characters the author has yet to kill off include Barristan Selmy, Doran Martell, Brynden the Blackfish Tully, Randall and Dickon Tarly, Lady Walder Bolton, The Sand Snakes, Thoros of Muir, and One One, just to name a few. In other words, if you thought George R. R. Martin was savage, he's clearly got nothing on the TV show's writers. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.